Hi everyone, my name is Yitush Tum. Today, we are going to be talking about nonprofit galleries. This presentation will focus on two main issues, forming your nonprofit gallery and keeping the tax exempt status. I manage the nonprofit's tax compliance practice at Wagner CPAs. We work with over 700 tax exempt organizations annually. I've also helped numerous organizations get tax exempt status over the nine years of my career. In this presentation, I would like to share with you my experience in helping organizations obtain tax exempt status and what needs to be done to maintain this status. I will go over the benefits of nonprofit galleries, talk about the steps needed to get your tax exempt status, and finally discuss the filing requirements to maintain the tax exempt status. So why go through all the trouble to form a nonprofit gallery? Well, it opens many doors for funding and savings. For one, you'll be able to get grants from the private foundations and the government. You'll be eligible to receive tax deductible donations from the general public. Your net income from activities related to your mission will be tax exempt at both federal and state levels. And finally, you may get exemptions from sales and property taxes. These are great benefits that are not available to for-profit galleries. How can the artist and the art community benefit from this additional funding? Nonprofit galleries do not primarily depend on sales for funding. That means that they can show more experimental work. This opens many doors for emerging artists or artists with edgier work. Nonprofit galleries can be an excellent way to network for the artists. Spending time at nonprofit galleries gives artists opportunities to meet other artists and invite them to their studios. Finally, fundraising options can be a great marketing tool for the artists. They can donate their work to be sold to benefit the gallery. This will give them the ability to show their work to the community. Now the technical and the boring part. What steps are required to get access to all these great benefits? First, you need to file articles of incorporation with the state of New York. You have to file as a non-stock, non-profit corporation. You must also list a registered agent who has a physical address in New York. Second, you need to obtain an employer identification number from the Internal Revenue Service. This can be done online and it only takes a few minutes. Third, you need to create bylaws of the organization. After these steps, you'll be ready to file IRS Form 1023, Application for Recognition of Exemption under Section 501c3 of the Internal Revenue Code. This form is your key to obtain the tax exempt status. Please keep in mind that only nonprofit galleries that have a tax exempt status can enjoy all the benefits discussed earlier. Finally, you need to register with the state of New York as a charity. Since Form 1023 is the most important form for obtaining a tax exempt status, I would like to give you an overview of this form. This is a 12 page form with 12 parts and generally requires a few pages of attachments. I will mention the six more important parts. The form asks general questions about the applicant entity such as name, address and organizational structure. Detailed narrative description of activities need to be provided for the IRS to determine whether you have a tax exempt purpose. You'll also need to report compensation and other financial arrangements for the directors and employees of the organization. The form also asks about your planned specific activities such as lobbying or methods of fundraising. It, only, it also requires past financial data and projections to cover a total period of three years. For example, if the organization has been in existence for more than one year, you'll need to report the financial data for the past year 
and project the financials for the next two years. What are the absolute requirements to obtain the tax exempt status? First, you must have a charitable purpose. The purpose of the organization in the bylaws must be limited to charitable activities. Your bylaws must permanently dedicate all assets to a charitable purpose. This means that all of your assets needs to go to another charity or to the government upon dissolution. You must have a board of directors. In New York, you need a minimum of three board members. Finally, you must have a conflict of interest policy. This policy should require board members with a conflict to abstain from voting on the matter of interest. Now let's talk about the common mistakes made in the formation process. Organizations not getting professional help would be risking both their time and money. The first common mistake is forming the wrong type of entity. The organization needs to be formed as a non-stat, non-profit corporation. Keep in mind that employer identification number and articles of incorporation applications are irrevocable. Any mistakes made in these forms may require the organization to be dissolved, which means more time and money down the drain. Not having a specific enough charitable purpose statement in the bylaws is the number one rejection reason of a Form 1023 application. It's very important that this statement is prepared very carefully. The other common mistake is filing an incomplete Form 1023. If the organization has a specific enough charitable purpose and if the Form 1023 is completed accurately, the application will get in the fast track to be processed by the IRS. Incomplete application will result in a correspondence from the IRS and each correspondence will delay the process by approximately six weeks. If you are like most people, any IRS correspondence creates some stress. It will also take away from your valuable time from doing the work you have the passion for. Having a complete 1023 may save you up to a year in the approval process. Finally, there is a great advantage to file Form 1023 within 27 months of formation of your entity. If you file within the 27 months of formation, your tax exam status take effect from the formation date. This means that all donations you receive since the formation of the organization will be tax deductible. If the filing is made after 27 months of formation without a reasonable cause, the tax exam status will take effect on the Form 1023 filing date. In addition, you'll need to file an additional schedule with your Form 1023. So after all this time and energy spent to obtain the tax exam status, how do you maintain it? Well, you have to comply with the annual filing requirements with the IRS and State of New York. Let's go over the IRS Form 990 filing requirements. The type of the Form 990 to be filed depends on the gross receipts of the entity. Gross receipts generally equal revenue of an organization. If your gross receipts is under $50,000, you can file a Form 990N. This is a very short form and can be completed online. If your gross receipts are under $200,000 and total assets are under $500,000, you can file a Form 990EZ. If the gross receipts are over $200,000 or assets are over $500,000, you'll have to file a Form 990. These thresholds are the minimum filing requirements. Please keep in mind that you can choose to file a Form 990EZ if the gross receipts are under $50,000 or you can file a Form 990 if your gross receipts are under $200,000. Should your gallery have any unrelated business income, such as advertising, you'll also need to file a Form 990-T 
to report this taxable activity. In addition to the filing a Form 990 with the IRS, you need to file Form Char 500 with the State of New York. The state requires an independent review report to be filed if the total support and revenue is between $100,000 and $250,000. If the total support and revenue is over $250,000, you'll need to file an independent audit report. The state is currently discussing increasing these thresholds for the audit and review requirements. What are the penalties for late filing or not filing a Form 990 with the IRS? Well, they are quite large that you would not you would not know what will hit you until you open the notice from the IRS. That's why it's very important to file a complete return on time. The return is not considered complete unless all required schedules are filed with the return. The IRS automatically revokes the tax exempt status of organizations for failing to file for three consecutive years. It's a costly process to reinstate the tax exempt status. Also, for late filings, the IRS charges $20 per day up to $10,000 for organizations with gross revenue less than $1 million. For organizations with gross revenue more than $1 million, the late filing penalties are $100 per day up to $50,000. State of New York also have big penalties for non-compliance. Your registration would be revoked if you fail to comply with the reporting requirements. Attorney General may also seek civil penalties of $1,000 per violation and up to $100 per day for non-compliance. Forming a non-profit organization and maintaining the tax exam status is not a very hard job. However, you need to plan it right and have a strategy. You must create a charitable purpose and be dedicated to it. You need to be patient. The process may take over a year. You need to dedicate resources and get professional help in the formation process. If you rely on inexperienced volunteers or generalists to get the job done, you may end up with delays in your application process or large penalties. Thank you.